one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Right. This is the interview of um, Anne Meredith by uh, Brenda Hepler on November 5th, 2008. And to keep, uh, be, stay in keeping with the uh, traditional opening question <laughs> of every meeting. Okay. Um, what are your first best childhood memories of libraries? It would be going to the Beverly Hills Library with my mother after school and picking out books. And I remember because it was in the Beverly Hills City Hall, which is an historic building. Mm. And um, going there, picking out books, going home. That's my first memory. Mm. Okay, great. And how important was reading to you growing up? Uh, very important. My whole family's. A reader. We have, as long as I can remember, there's always books in the, you know, all over the house. Mm -hmm. um, my father was a, a non-stop reader, and my mother read a lot. My mother was a teacher, so uh, elementary school teacher, so it was just part of our <laughs> household. Uh, and then, uh, where did you grow up? Then in Beverly Hills, was it? Beverly Hills. Hills yes. Okay. And what awareness of community did you do have growing up? Well, my father was a, an employee of Los Angeles County, and my mother worked for LA City Schools. So kind of the concept of working for the community is just part of the family. Um, Any particular memories of community involvement? Um, trying to think. Well, we lived in a really close-knit um, neighborhood, and there was always, everybody looked out for each other. Mm -hmm. um, people had lived there a long time. So I think that was probably the most um, important memory, at least the early memory. Mm -hmm. you know. Up close and personal. Yeah. And your education? Where did you I go? got a Bachelor of Arts in art from UCLA and a Master's of Arts in Architecture and Planning from UCLA. Oh, okay. And your work experiences from, um, let's say, the time you finished college and got your Master's to today? Um, I actually had one job that's relevant. Um, I was in high school. I was a li my, Actually, my very first paid job oh. was I was a library page. Oh, oh. Sorry, just skip that. <laughs> That's okay. At the West Hollywood Library. Oh. And then after, um, in between um, undergraduate and graduate school, I was a school teacher. I taught art. Oh. Oh. And then after that, I worked pretty much, I started, came, as soon as I got my master's, I, I moved up here and I started working pretty fast for um, the city of San Leandro oh. as the city's graphic artist. I was there five years, and then I went to Vallejo, the city of Vallejo, and I was there for 20 years. Mm. And then I've been in Lafayette for seven. And what is your role exactly uh, with the city of Lafayette? Let's kind of get that into the interview. But you're my title, well, my title is Community Development Director. Community Development, development Director. Director. Okay. And as the city manager says, that's pretty much everything outside except police and parks. Mm -hmm. So it's um, public works, which is maintaining streets and trees and mm -hmm. the medians. It's engineering, uh, which does the roads and any kind of physical improvements and planning, who does all the uh, development um, in terms of new houses, new stores, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And then I, but most of my time is spent on special projects like the library. Mm -hmm. Any other special projects besides the library? Um, the downtown planning process. Okay. Um, I'm doing all the um, environmental work in terms of um, sustainability, mm -hmm. greenhouse gas emissions. Great. We do see those. Well, it sounds like you have a full plate. <laughs> <laughs> um, what attracted you to Lafayette as far as wanting to work in Lafayette? Was there anything particular about when this job came up, what attracted you to it? Um, well, I'd been in Vallejo for a long time, and we just happened to move to Lafayette. Mm -hmm. um, and so, soon about 
three months after we moved to Lafayette, this job opened up. Mm. And since I was ready to leave Vallejo, and this job um, was available, you know, had, mm -hmm. was advertised. And I'd never um, worked for the city I lived in. So I tried, and I got it. And it was in it's been interesting. And so why did you choose Lafayette to live? Schools. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many kids do you have? One. One. Yeah. And so how old, what boy or girl? A girl. Girl. She went to, um, we lived in Walnut Creek before, mm -hmm. and she went to uh, Seven Hills oh, yeah. through middle school. And then um, a lot of the kids from her middle school class were going to Akalani. So um, we had to move into the district where yeah, to go. So there. that's when you moved here, and then when she finished, we moved back. back. <laughs> uh, yeah, schools, yes. Um, uh, defining the goals of a community as a place of mutual support, shared values, and acceptance of difference. How do you see Lafayette meeting these goals? So, in other words, you know, basically three points: mutual support shared values, and the acceptance of differences. Any experiences you've had that maybe one of those? I think the library, having, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what I've observed with this whole community effort for the library, um, it's, it's, while it hasn't involved everybody, it certainly involved a huge segment of the community, um, kids and older people, and families and single people mm -hmm. and it's been um, I think remarkable that people have come together for that I don't I don't know that how many communities would do it to that extent mm -hmm. so I think uh, Lafayette's special in that way um, and it, any personal experiences or stories relative to this idea you know just examples well I, I think it's just um, usually you know I'm I work with a lot of volunteer groups, and this isn't a criticism of no. volunteer groups, but you know, people start out on a project very enthusiastic and gung-ho, and they're going to spend all this time. Mm -hmm. But as the project goes along, people's lives, mm -hmm. you know, they have busy lives, and they drift off, and while they're still committed maybe emotionally to a project, mm -hmm. they just don't have the time. Well, with this project, I'm always amazed that, you know, we have these meetings, and the same people show up faithfully and uh, want to participate and want to participate in the uh, in the process. Yeah, yeah the bill. it is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so how long ago were you in any contact with the Lafayette Library? When would you say your first? Uh, um, your earliest memories of Lafayette Library was it when you started this job or prior when you were leaving? That was when I started this job. job. Okay. And um, it was really, um, I don't even think I had gone to the library because actually we lived closer to the, um, when we lived in Lafayette, we lived closer to the Pleasant Hill mm -hmm. Library. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I even went to the library here until Steve Falk, the city manager, talked about, this was 2001, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're looking for a site. So I got involved mm -hmm. with um, the site selection. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you feel a library serves a community? In what ways? Well, I think it's um, a very special asset for a community. Um, it um, it's free, and that means it's available at no cost um, to everybody. Um, books and information and all the resources that they have are available to everybody, no matter what their financial mm -hmm. situation is. Maybe that's not so quite so true in Lafayette, but um, I think in general, a library and a community is just a great community asset for everybody because it is free and available. Mm -hmm. um, in Lafayette, it's just a great resource for all ages. Um, it supplements the good education that kids get here. Mm -hmm. And um, there's Lafayette's demographics is, is there's a lot of kids and there's a lot of older people. 
And so it's a, it's a wonderful um, asset for the older mm -hmm. community as well. Mm -hmm. Big print. <laughs> 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 um, and let's see. In your job, what do you see the, uh, as the relationship between the city government and the library? How do you see the, the two connecting, other than you are obviously in charge of the development of the mm -hmm. library, but how else, am, you know, what is the connection or relationship between a city government and a library, city li the, the library? Um, well, a lot of communities, the library is part of the city organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the police department, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a library. Uh, Lafayette's different than that. And in fact, most of the communities in Contra Costa are different than that. They have the county system. But I think um, there's always a very strong relationship in, in a community between the city government and the other public entities in the community, the schools, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. libraries, utilities, anybody else that's uh, pub providing public services to the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. There's always a mutual respect, mutual coordination um, to ensure that one, that all of us understand what the others are doing, mm -hmm. um, so that we can work together on, on mm -hmm. things, um, pool resources. Does the city have a power to hire and fire people in the library? No. No. That is that county library? That's role? county library. I see. So as far as this city, we don't have, have that kind of power. No, not now. No. In, in the new library, it's going to be a little bit different because we will have a city employee working at the library. Oh, okay. And this, the role of this? That would be the building and superintendent. The, the building? Building and superintendent. superintendent. Okay. The, um, the city uh, will be, well, they, we own the building, mm -hmm. but we'll be maintaining it. Mm -hmm. And then the county library will run the library. And then the uh, library foundation will run the programs. I see. Okay. Good. Um, And um, let's see, any particular experiences you've had that you might like to share relative to this relationship between the city and the development of this library? But how do you, I mean, have you particularly enjoyed your role in this capacity? I mean, I'm sure there's been trying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been, I, I think this is a fascinating project. Mm -hmm. I've never. I've worked on a lot of very interesting projects, but uh -huh. never a library, like um, particularly a library like this. So I've enjoyed it very much. Uh -huh. um, I've always been impressed with the um, library staff, county mm -hmm. library staff, and Ann Kane, and Laura Donahue, to Susan Weaver, and Miss Donna, and everybody mm -hmm. that works over at the mm -hmm. library. So. Okay, great. Now, um, right here in. Right, so looking at the um, 2008 library, maybe called 2009 <laughs> <laughs> library, um, you were not here after the 19, you were not involved then with the 1996 study program. However, you were part of the vision task force, is that? No. No, all right, so you came after, after. the vision task force. Um, and so you started in 2001, mm -hmm. is that correct? All right. So in 2001, what had been accomplished then when you got um, this job? Well, the Vision 2000 task force mm -hmm. had, had done, um, there had been a site selection okay. process. Mm -hmm. I think they were looking at 13 sites. Okay. And I'm trying to remember now. Um, and I think it had, by the time I got involved, I think they had pretty well, they would narrowed it down to three sites. Mm -hmm. And then it was really looking at those three sites um, that, I, that's, I, I really got involved with it. Mm -hmm. So how about, uh, so in other words, 
you were there, came at the time, three sites for possibilities. Had the, there had been no architectural plans no. at that point? No. no. Had the concept of the consortium come up at that no. point? No. No. Okay, good. Um, so what do you think created the change from the limited number of people named as contributors to this larger group that came forward? What do you think might have made that spark? I mean, in terms of the uh, development of the, fun, you know, uh, the, the, the fundraising and, and the people involved, too. Um, well, I think there's always been a, a, a very active core of people mm -hmm. who've always seen this as a goal. Um, friends of Lafayette mm -hmm. Library, obviously, and then um, the uh, Lafayette Community Foundation, mm -hmm. Ann Groden, um, we always had this as a goal. Um, and then I think it was just, I, I think it was probably just a, um, a group of people that saw that this could happen. Mm -hmm. And once a site had, was selected, and, and then it just, then we, um, I remember the sequence. When the site was selected, and then um, the architect was selected through a competition. And I think that competition got a lot of people excited mm -hmm. because we had the, the four finalists. Mm -hmm. People went to the veterans, the old veterans building to look at it. And we had a thousand people come through. So I think that really got people to the mm -hmm. point that this, yep, this really is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then, then the, the next big one was the uh, winning the state grant. Yeah. Were you in Sacramento at that point? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah so that was exciting. It so, what were some of the feelings you had uh, when up in Sacramento relative, you know, here we are, little Lafayette, and all these other people buying? <laughs> well, it was an interesting experience because I had, had um, I was in charge of putting the grant together, oh. and um, it turned out that um, we, we really only had. We'd hired a consultant to do the work, but the work was just not very good. And so finally, um, mm -hmm. I took it over. And it was, I remember it was right over Christmas, because we it was due in the first part of January. So it was, what year was this? It would have been 2003, okay. in yeah. 2003. And it was due in January 2004. And so, um, all the activity leading up to it in terms of getting the architects selected, mm -hmm. the plans done up, um, and the city council decided pretty much at the last minute to go ahead and try for it, because nobody thought we'd get it. Mm -hmm. And who, who were the people that thought it was worth going? Well, Ann Grove. Ann, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. And um, so we thought we'd try, and, and I worked on it. I remember I was um, with my family, and we were down in San Diego, and I remember I was working on it. I was proofreading mm -hmm. the application at Christmas um, down south, and it just, it just worked out. You know, the application, mm -hmm. we submitted it, and then uh, we didn't hear for a long time, and then we made it to the finals, and then that day in Sacramento, it it was just a matter of, a lot of it was luck, but a lot of it was just, um, you know, we had a good proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you think the consortium had a part in... Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, the uniqueness yes. of this. Yes. Uh, and um, what do you remember as far as how the idea of the consortium bubbled up? Well, if I, if I can remember correctly, it was one of the... I forget the, what the name of the group mm -hmm. at that time well, it was. Bob Fisher mm -hmm. mentioned that um, maybe you could get, I think it was JFK University, mm -hmm. to, to be um, participate in some programming. And then Roger Falcone, um, I'm not sure it was at that meeting, but he came up, well, maybe we could get the uh, Lawrence Hoff Science, mm -hmm. and then it just grew from there. Yeah. Inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So, why is this new library important to you? 
Well, personally, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, a yeah, it's a it's an exciting project. Um, it's an important public facility to the community. It's going to be a great asset. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of everything that's happened to, so far. Um, I hope you know when it's all done and we look back that. Uh, mm -hmm. To need to be proud of it, I'm sure I will be. Mm. <laughs> and of course, um, all right. So, as part of your job, what role or roles have you played relative to the library itself? You say you wrote the grant, or you know, basically mm -hmm. took on the final editor and all that of the grant. What else? What have been your other roles as far as the city? development? Well, I, I was, well, I still am technically the project manager. Oh, okay. Um, but I took the, I did all the architectural, you know, taking to getting the design, mm -hmm. the grant, um, just kind of going through the process of getting all the, per, um, the drawings. Mm -hmm. um, once we got to the point of construction drawings, then it really, we handed it off to Tony Coe, our city engineer, mm -hmm. and so he's been handling the actual construction part. I see. Okay. How has your art background worked into this project? Do you see a major connection there? Well, obviously through the, uh, helping out with the fundraising, um, doing doing the graphics, helping out oh, with the graphics. I see. Oh, yes. Done that. That's right, the graphics. Mm -hmm. And then, um, kind of a coincidence, um, the two architects, um, Barbara Fulmang and, and Wade Killifer, they were going through architecture school at UCLA at the same time I was. Oh. And while we didn't know each other, um, we remembered each other. Oh. Um, so when I hadn't seen them since um, well, we all graduated from mm. UCLA. So that was, a, that was a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. Um, what have you enjoyed the most in participating in this library development? I just see, I think just seeing that um, just from trying to find a site and then um, to now it's being built. I mean, I think that the whole thing is pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. And in your observation, um, who have you seen making a real impact, say, you know, the, the people who you feel had a real impact um, on the library development? Like, um, the city council's always been very supportive mm -hmm. of it. Um, Don Tatson is from the city council, always has made this kind of his special project. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Steve Falk, city manager. He has, um, you know, been always come up with the creative ways of getting, making things happen in terms mm -hmm. of making the agreement with the veterans to get, so we could get the site okay. and yeah. So and then um, so that's from the city on the outside. But obviously, Ann Groden, um, the friends of the Lafayette Library. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. Um. What are your best memories? Um, any stories? Of what was the most fun that you had? Uh, um, memorable moments? Well, probably being in Sacramento at the, on that day, yeah. um, getting the grant because it was such a surprise. Yeah. And we, you know, we were at the very end. We'd been there all day, and it was um, Steve Falk, Ann Groden. Teresa Geringer, Ann Appert, Gwen Lennox, uh, I think that was like, oh, Ruth Bailey, mm -hmm. um, and a couple of other people. And then um, just sitting in that room and just seeing all the different communities, how important this was, because there were some was very poor communities. Mm -hmm. This was to be their, this was their only chance to get a library. And, uh, the pleas they made, you know, the 
the stories they told and their presentations. And it was just a very exciting, moving day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one you'll always remember, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what values uh, did this, or your contribution, um, let's see, what values, this is not right, were met in being involved with this library? In other words, your personal values, what were, what did this development of this library um, fulfill according to your uh, values? That's not a very well, well stated <laughs> question. That's, I don't like the way it's stated on the paper. <laughs> well, community service has always been very important okay. to me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, seeing a public library being created in a community, I think, it's, it's certainly fulfills that. Uh, you know. um, have you seen an increase in community involvement in this process in any way? Well, Lafayette community as a whole is, is um, very active in, in community affairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there seems to be like a lot of volunteers, a lot of people mm -hmm. are willing to spend the time. Mm -hmm. um, as the library has become real and as and more and more activities are happening around mm -hmm. the library, I've seen you know through Gwen's. Um, committees, how, how involvement has increased. Involvement has increased. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, and what, what in this new library is the most exciting to you? Um, well, I think the architecture is going to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it's um, a green building. Mm -hmm. um, All the technology, obviously, which all all new libraries are getting, um, the, the relationship of spaces, um, the rooms, all the different rooms that there's going to be in the community hall. I think it just as a place, it's going to be um, very special. Mm -hmm. And of um, what value? Because I don't think I'm going to be asking everybody this, but I know you are very involved, uh, are very involved with the public art. Um, chosen, what value do you see public art being in connection with the library? Well, there were a lot of discussions about this with the committee about um, Oakland Museums helping us mm -hmm. with this, and um, so they've really been running the process and getting the, the discussions going, and there, so there was a lot of discussion with the, with the committee about um, what is public art and what it's, what's its value. I think the consensus was that it should s stimulate thought. You may not like it uh, or the aesthetics of it, but if it gets you thinking, if it gets you, if it broadens your horizons, mm -hmm. um, then that's important, especially the library. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and why do you think the people of Lafayette have responded so enthusiastically to this new library project? Well, the, the, as a library, as a community, as a whole, uh, education is so important. Mm -hmm. So this is really going to be a place of education for all ages. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what outcome do you hope for the most with this new library? In other words, what would you like to have, or what do you consider the most important impact this library could have on the community when it's completed? Well, it's going to be, I mean, it's physically located at, at the heart of the community, mm -hmm. so um, both physically and emotionally, mm -hmm. it's going to be, um, become the, the heart of the community. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue the redevelopment of the downtown in terms mm -hmm. of um, carrying through all the um, 
enhancements of the downtown that have happened around the mm -hmm. core and it's going to now start moving down to the east. Um, so I think that's important. Okay. And what do you look forward to enjoying the most once the library is completed? Well, For yourself. Oh, mm -hmm. well, two things. Well, okay. <laughs> the city will be holding its public meetings there. Oh. And so um, while the community center is, is you know, a good facility, this one's going to be just make the meetings um, that much better. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's going to be a special place for me to go at lunchtime and, mm -hmm. and enjoy. The and field. enjoy, yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel, and in what way, does this new library meet the criteria for a 21st century library? It's not going to be just about books. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to have the technology so that um, all the internet capabilities are there. It will provide a meeting place for discussions. Mm -hmm. It will have I'll provide programming that you may typically think about in a traditional library. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, could, there could be dances, there could be festivals, there could be speakers, art shows. Um, it's going to go much further than, than the traditional or the kind of the, the, the 20th century idea of, mm -hmm. a, of a library. Okay. Um, and how do you think, if this is a bit redundant, but just as a finale, how do you feel it will enhance our sense? It's going to provide the. It's going to provide a center. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a real landmark in the community, both a physical and an emotional landmark. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to become a meeting place mm -hmm. for you know all ages. Um, it's just going to provide a venue for for. Um, for the community to do its well, community things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anne, I think we have covered everything. Uh, do you have anything else that comes to mind that you would like to? Um, I don't think so. Okay, thank you very, very much.